God bless you, everyone. We thank God for you. We thank God for your response that you gave last week. We appreciate it. We, you know, we need to encourage one another, and you encourage me, and I encourage you. So we appreciate it. So today, we come to talk about the Book of Acts again, and I pray that if you are sick today, you might be healed, that God might touch your body right now and make you whole. And we come to pray for you, that God might touch you and encourage your spirit. I know some of you are going through from the hurricane and different things that take place in life, different storms of life. But with God is able. Your faith is going to put to work sometimes. So let's go to the throne of grace, where there are plenty of grace to help in time of need. Believe God with me for your healing, for your miracle. God wants to give you a miracle today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come boldly to the throne of grace, according to your miracle working power. We adore your great and mighty name. We give you praise and glory, Lord, for what you're going to do and what you're doing right now. Lord, we pray for our country, Lord. Our country is in turmoil. Lord, we're going through election, Lord. Stormy times in every side, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you might have mercy upon us, Lord, to heal our land, Jesus, from the pandemic, everything all at once, Lord Jesus. Well, we know you care, God. You're merciful, Heavenly Father. So we have to look upon our government and our leaders, Lord. Oh, God, we are praying for them right now, God. Jesus, oh, God, send us some leaders, strong leaders, Lord, through this election, God. Jesus, regulate and fix whatever, Lord, need to fix our praise it, Jesus. Heal our land, Jesus, and we will heal our leaders, Lord, Jesus. Oh, God, the separation in this country, Lord. We have to heal, God. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, you, pray, you said, Lord, we should pray for everyone that they should be saved. Oh, God, you're not willing that any should perish, Lord. That all should be saved and come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So we are praying for our leaders for that reason, Lord Jesus. We are praying for police force. We are praying for our army, our military. Oh, God, wherever they are, Lord, they're doing a great job. Strength and encourage them right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we are praying them through, Lord God. We are praying, oh God, for our, our food suppliers, Lord, our farmers, Lord, our truck drivers. Lord, we don't forget them, Lord. Bless them, Lord Jesus. We thank you for them, Lord Jesus. We thank you for police, Lord God. We need them, Lord Jesus. Only you can restore and restore. We can chuck them right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We are praying them to all our 911 crews, our Red Cross, Lord Jesus, in time like this, Lord, when there's a hurricane. We are praying for everyone, Lord. We are praying for those who lost their homes, Lord Jesus. Restore, God, and bring them into a place they've never gone before, that they might hear the gospel, Lord Jesus. We are praying for those who are sick among us, Lord. That one with breast cancer, Lord God, and crying out right now to you. We are praying for healing, God. There's nothing, Lord, that you can heal, God. We are praying for healing for breast cancer, lung cancer right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for healing, miracle working power. Touch them right now, Lord. That coughing, Lord Jesus. You think you can't get rid of the cough? We rebuke that cough right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for healing. Touch that cough right now, God. In the the name of that new moan a cough right now jesus we pray for healing in the name of jesus thank you lord that headache lord we rebuke it in the name of jesus we pray oh god that the mighty power of the holy spirit touch them right now and make them every bit whole god we thank you for your healing we thank you for your miracle we thank you for the mighty power of the holy spirit touch them now in jesus name amen praise god for your healing I feel the mighty power of the Holy Spirit touching somebody today. God is able. Shout him hallelujah. Give him some praise. Now we go right back to the book of Hacks. If we're finishing Hacks and the storm is over, the stormy times on the ocean, and now Paul is in Rome speaking to the Jews and how the Jews respond and, and all of those things. And the Jews were glad to see Paul. He was under house arrest as they applied to Caesar at Rome. Oh, and they realized that he wasn't guilty, so they put him under house arrest. They didn't know what to do with him. They tried so many, Felix and all of those different judges who tried him, and governors, they didn't find a fault with him. So they sent him to Rome as he requested, and it's the Lord's will that the gospel go to Rome and to the far, far hands of the hurt. So God sent him there, and he was under house arrest. And there's only so much they could do because he's God's servant. So they sent him there and he was 
two years. He was under house arrest, but sometimes they freed him a little bit, and he got a lot of Jews that he spoke to. And, and verse 21, chapter 28 and verse 21, they replied, the Jew replied to Paul. You know, they, they gathered around him every day, large crowd, Jews and Gentiles, because his fame went abroad. And because of his fame and the mighty power of the Holy Ghost worked through him, they heard about it. But Paul wondered if they heard about his persecution and his death threat in Jerusalem. They were interested in that. They didn't hear that. Because those Jews in Rome, they wasn't such a bigot like those in Jerusalem. They listened. And some of them received Jesus as Savior, but some didn't receive. Some hardened their heart. And they replied, verse 21, they replied, we have not received any letters. Paul asked them, have you received anything from, he said, no, we didn't hear anything. We're not interested in that. We want some of what you got. We want some of the mighty power that God has given you. He said, have you heard those things? They, re they replied, we have not received any letters from Judah concerning you. And none of the brethren who have come from there. Nobody that come from there have bring any bad report on your power. So we want to hear what you have to say. Verse 22. But we want to hear what your views are. For we know that, that people everywhere are talking against this sect. They're talking about that sect of Jew. There are certain sect of Jew they're talking about all the time. They are divided. You, you know, the Pharisee and the Sadducees, they are divided. And, and then they talk about each other when they shouldn't. But Paul come to bring peace among them. They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came even larger in large numbers. It was overwhelming, Paul said. How the Jews and the Gentiles was gathering around him to hear what he had to say. He heard about the preaching of the gospel. He heard about the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit. They want some of what he got. And some people gladly received and some didn't. And he said they were staying from morning until night, until evening, to hear what Paul had to say. There's something about the power of God. When you start preaching the gospel and God send you, somebody want to hear. Somebody want to be delivered. Somebody want to get saved. And everywhere Paul go, they were bringing the sick, the lame, the maimed, and they were, they were healed. So they, that's what's taking place there right now. From morning until night, he explained and declared to them the kingdom of God and tried to convince them about Jesus from the law of Moses and from the prophets. You see, from the law of Moses and the prophets, he tried to convince them because they didn't believe their Messiah has come. Paul wanted to preach the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. The kingdom of heaven. And to tell them about the great thing that the Lord has done and will do to them if they accept Jesus as Savior, accept that their Messiah has come. You don't have to go and make animal sacrifice anymore. A sacrifice for sin. You don't have to go to, to, to the, kill these animals on certain days and worship with animal blood. And that, that should be a sacrifice for sin. Jesus was a perfect sacrifice. And he wanted to tell him about the church and the building of the church. And the church, he wanted to tell him about the pearl of great price, the church. So they gathered from morning until evening. And many of them were convinced that Jesus Christ was the Lord and Savior. And he's coming back again. That he came unto his own. But many did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them gave he power. They get power to become the sons of God, the children of God. And they, they, they have right to eternal life. They want to know what they could they do to be saved. Because if they don't shed the animal blood, they think they couldn't be saved. But Jesus said, 
as they write in the, in the, in the Bible, in Deuteronomy. Has Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness? Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Must die for this world, for the sin of the world. Lifted up on the cross. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. Now, now the children of Israel, they were, when they get into the wilderness, when God bring them into the wilderness of Sinai, they were criticizing Moses and God and talking against God. And God heard it and was displeased in Deuteronomy chapter 21 and 5. God was displeased about that. And they were dying because they were criticizing that they were having this soft bread and, and they were having any meat and they were criticizing that God bring them here to kill them and Moses to kill them and God heard it and they, they were fiery serpent among them. And the fiery serpent devoured so many of them. But when they cry out to Moses to intercede for them, then Moses interceded and God said, lift up a brazen serpent and a post. And anyone was beaten by the snake, the serpent. And when they look up, they will get healed. Your healing is in Jesus Christ. Your healing is above, not here. As Moses lifted up the serpent, you look up, look up to Jesus. Many people have this brazen serpent all over, showing healing, proving that healing is available. Especially the places where doctors office and many places in the West Indies, I saw them. They lift up the brazen serpent, showing it's a place of healing. But if you can have it on your doorpost and you don't have Jesus. But Jesus was a lamb that was slain in Exodus chapter 12 and 11. It was a lamb, the blood on the doorpost. So Paul was trying to explain to them and tell him that Jesus has come. Joy. You have joy in your heart now. The Messiah has come. You can be a part of the church. Even though you are a Jew, you can be a Jew and be a part of the church. Jesus died for the world, for the church. He called the church the prize of great, the pearl of great price. In Matthew chapter 15 and, and 46. He called the church the, the, the pearl of great price. That's what you are, people of God. You are pearls. You know how pearls are hard to make by the heisters? This is how the church in the world persecuted. And Paul said, I am not ashamed of this gospel of Jesus Christ. If I'm persecuted for righteousness, in Romans 1 and 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For this reason, I'm persecuted and shown in this chain, but I am not ashamed. But people of God, you are the pearl of great price. All you have to do is live holy, spotless, come out from the abortionist and all of those things. Because some Christians think they can do abortion. But you're a killer. If you're a killer doctor, you an abortion, you're a killer. If you're a nurse that supports abortion, you're a killer. If you're a politician that supports abortion, you're a killer. Come out from among them and be holy. Because God said, be holy, for I am holy. And if you support abortion, you're a killer. And the Bible says, none of these things shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But if you repent. So Paul was preaching to the Jew and telling him that all of those things that the Jew did in the wilderness was wrong. And then that's why they were bitten and killed by the serpent. And no, Jesus came to show them that he hung on the tree. He bled and died. He is a serpent that hung on the tree. He bled and died for your sins. As Moses lifted up the serpent, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth on him shall not perish. But whosoever believeth not shall receive domination. He was telling the Jew that. You do believe, you're going to receive domination. But if you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, you become a part of the church. That Jesus died and shed his blood for. Jesus loved the church. He called the church his bride. And today, saints of God, you are his bride. You are the bride of Christ. He think much about you. He said in Proverbs 8 and 12, Those who love me, I'll fill their treasures. I'll fill them up. I'll cause them to have treasures. 
I caused him to be rich, physically rich, spiritually rich, filling with the Holy Spirit. God, he said, I love those who love me. And I hate those who don't love me anymore. Don't love. If you hate God, then he hates you. If you love him, he fill your treasure. He fill him with the righteousness of God. He fill him with the Holy Spirit. That's Proverbs 15 and, and 12. He love those, I love those who love me. And I cause them to have substance. And I'll fill their treasure. God love the church. He love the righteous. And if you are living a righteous life, God love you. And you have great things in store for you. The Bible says, eyes have not seen. Neither have it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. When you read Revelation 21, you see a very small peak that John has in heaven. And he writes, the pearls, the gate of pearls, the gold, and all of these great stones that lay there in heaven waiting for you. Some, some, some of you might not have diamond here, but it's in heaven. Everything is there. So don't, don't worry about what you don't have. God has great things in store for you. So he was trying to convince the Jew that God loved them and have some great things for them. But you must be born again. You must be saved. You must accept the Messiah. He came unto his own. And he's coming back again. He came unto his own. You are his own. And I come to preach the gospel to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. And when they wouldn't receive of Paul the Jews, he turned to the Gentile. And they come in numerous amount every day. Big numbers, the Gentile came. The Jews start getting jealous, some of them getting saved. So here what verse 24 said. Some were convinced by what Paul said, but others would not believe. Verse 25. They disagree among themselves and began to leave after Paul had made this final statement. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to you. Therefore, therefore, when he said, don't to Isaiah, God is going to speak what Isaiah said. He said, I speak the truth to you. And I did all I have to do to you. And you still for the hand believe. He was saying to them, where are you going to spend eternity if you don't receive your Messiah? This is what Moses speak about. This is what Moses and the prophet, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all, they all speak about these things. Yes, Daniel, they speak about all of these things that God has prepared in his word. That you should be saved. And he sent me here to speak to the Jew and then to the Gentile. And because you won't receive, then I have to turn to the Gentile. Because they come in such numbers. They are hungry. They are hungry and thirst for righteousness. Because God sent them to Rome that they should hear the gospel. And that they were much, they were much Catholic and Jews and different nations. But God wanted the Catholic to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not, not filled with Hail Mary, filled with the Holy Spirit. God love you. But I don't know where to get Hail Mary from. But his name is Jesus. And he wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. If you have, the Bible says, if you have not the Spirit of God, you are none of his. You have, somebody, you have religion, but you don't have Jesus. Religion can't get you to heaven. You need Jesus in your life. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to lead you, to teach you. To guide you and instruct you the way to go. But without the Holy Spirit in you, you're empty. You're only a believer. The Bible said, not just believer into the kingdom of heaven. You got to be born again to receive eternal life. You can't go to him with all them sin. You need to be born again. So, so Paul was saying what Isaiah the prophet said in Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, God was speaking to Isaiah and saying, Go to this people, verse 26, Go to this people and say, You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. He said, You will be ever hearing and not understanding. Because you get your mind off of what I'm saying. You're not receiving, you're not believing that Jesus Christ came. 
He came down to his own. He came to save you. He came that you might have eternal life. He came to let you know you don't have to have the bondage of looking for a blood sacrifice to worship. You can worship just where you are, in spirit and in truth. And he said, go to these people and say unto them, by hearing you hear, but never understand. You will never see, you will ever seeing, but never perceiving. You see, but you don't understand. You don't want to understand. You don't want to receive. You harden your heart. For this people here has become callous. Your ears, you turn your ears off from God. You turn your mind off from God. I will never receive that. That's what they're saying. They hardly hear with their ear. They harden their heart. Otherwise, they might be, God said, you know, Paul, stop speaking to them. Because they harden their heart. And because they harden their heart and they hate Jesus as their Messiah. You might speak to them one day and they might, they might turn to God. But right now, they, they are not receiving. And he said, they hear with their ear and see with their eyes. And understand with their heart and turn to me. Lest they will understand with their heart and hear with their ears. Because I reject them. They hear the word of God so many times. How long will you harden your heart? How long somebody today hear the word of God and harden their heart? How long are you going to harden your heart? How long are you going to hide between two opinions? That's what the scripture is saying. If God be God, serve him. And if the devil is your God, serve him. And in hell, you lift it up your eyes if you serve the devil. And, it, and Jesus said, these people hear the gospel so many times and harden the heart. And I've sent you here, Paul, just to speak to them. And they harden the heart. Leave them alone and let them go to hell if they want to. Therefore, I want, verse 28, Therefore, I want you to know that God's salvation has come and sent to the Gentiles, and they will listen. For a two whole year, Paul was stayed there in his own rented house, and he welcomed all that came to him to see him, boldly and without endurance. You know, you know the Roman gave him space to speak to all these people without any endurance all day. Favor, God divine favor. He said, those who love me are caused into of substance and I will fill their treasures with the Holy Spirit, with riches, money, everything that they need. That's what Paul had there, right there. Favor, God divine favor. There was no endurance. He preached the gospel of the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ every day. Freedom. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. All sacrifice, all of those things that led to Christ are passed away. Now the kingdom of heaven, he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand and it's time for you to know the things of the kingdom. I come to preach the gospel of the kingdom. I come to preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand and his righteousness. For this I am in, in prison and shamefully brought here. But thanks be to God, you got, I got victory, and I don't mind this chain. For the church's sake, for the, for the gospel's sake, I will stay in chain. If I will just preach the word, if they will just let me preach the word. So they give me freedom to preach the word, because they know it was innocent. After a long while, you know, he was killed. And Rome has killed so many Christians. So many. But right there... Paul write the book of Rome after that and his testimony. You know you're going to be tested, you're going to be tried because the trials of this life is nothing to compare with the glory of God that you should share one day. Saints of God, you might be going through right now and for a different reason we go through. Your faith, you hold on to your faith but you got to let your faith work. You're going to work in some way or the other. We're going to have misfortune we're going to have some things in life that happen to us, like Paul and the ocean, broken pieces, brokenness. 
but you hold on to the faith of Jesus Christ. You, during those times when you call upon the Lord, encourage you. Encouragement. We need encouragement when we're going through. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. And after a while, your faith becomes stronger. You become stronger in the Lord. After each test, after each trials, you become stronger. Only be a good faith. Hold on to your faith. Be strong and courageous. As Joshua 1 and 8, only be strong and have a good courage. Be courageous in, in the midst of your pain and your suffering that you're going through. God won't give you more than you can bear. You see the trial that Paul been through. You see all the trouble he's been through. But they hold on to the faith of Jesus Christ. I know God provides for them on the island of Malta. He provides for them when they go to Rome. When they meet the saints of God, the people of God, they provide. They give him clothes, food, shelter. And Paul have a rented house. And yet he don't have a job. He have a good place to live. God provide. He make ways. He hope and do it. He fill your treasures. He fill you with substance that you never dream. The Bible says, eyes have not seen. Neither have it entered into the heart of man. The great thing that God has prepared, not only in heaven but on earth. God has prepared some great things for you. Be strong and have a good courage. Be courageous. Let nothing make you discouraged. Because all of these things that Paul writes about here in his word. You know, the lamb that was slain. For all of this reason that you see here, God has provided the book of Hebrew to show the Jews that scattered all over the world that their Messiah has come. The great high priest that sit at the throne of grace, that you can go to him anytime. The other high priest, they're full of infirmities. He chose Aaron, he's full of infirmities. He chose Eli, he proved and chewed in the book of Samuel. He chose Eli's son, he lied. He chose, he chose Samuel, he's a weak man. He did his job, but he died. But Jesus, the great high priest, you can go to him anytime, night and day. He sits on the throne of grace, waiting for us to come. He, you know, he, he have room for everyone that come. There's room at his heart a day and night. The great high priest without infirmities. We see in the book of Hebrew, he used to speak to the prophet, but now he speak to his son, Jesus Christ. He speak to all of us. He speak to him if you go to him in prayer. He will speak to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. He said his angel, he said the angel of the Lord, encamp it round about them that fear him to deliver. He said his angel, he speaks to the Holy Spirit. You can come yourself boldly to the throne of grace. When Jesus died, when Jesus died, all of those place, the holies of all these, they tore down. They no more that. And then they're looking to go to the holies of all these. And, and if you look, waiting for the red ever, Jesus have fulfilled everything. Everything. And he is the only high priest right now. And he's waiting for you to come boldly to the throne of grace. Now you can't go to the people in higher authority and talk to them like you want to. But you can go to Jesus in the fear of God and call upon his name. He says, whosoever shall call upon his name, he shall deliver. And today you can call upon his name. You can talk to one so high, so great, so mighty, so magnificent. You can call upon him while he's near. He's right there with you. Call upon his name, Jesus. If you want to be saved, if you want to have eternal life, if you want to know that your sin is forgiven and you're going to heaven and not the dark and gloomy, terrible hell forever, where are you going to spend eternity? Think about it. Think about your life you live. Think about what you're doing with your life. Think about where you're sleeping, what you're doing with your life. You want to go to heaven? You can be born again. You can ask him to come into your heart and save you. He's willing. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And if you ask the Lord, confess your sins to him and turn from them and turn to God with all your heart, you shall have eternal life. You shall go into heaven one day and see the great things that God has prepared for him that love him. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Carter.